This is the SAU Report, a program featuring interviews with the faculty, staff, students, and alumni of Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia. Welcome to this edition of the SAU Report. I'm Daniel Green. And I'm Nikita Martin. With us today, we have Associate Professor of English, Dr. Lynn Belcher. Dr. Belcher, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for asking me. Um, why did you decide to become a teacher? Well, I didn't start out to be a teacher. In fact, I originally thought I would not ever be a teacher. Um, and then I found myself one day involved in, of all things, karate. And I started teaching a class in karate. And it was from there that I really decided maybe I'd be good at teaching and I decided to pursue it. Why did you go into English specifically? I suppose I probably got into English for the same reason most English teachers do and that is because we love to read. Uh, reading tends to motivate most people who get involved in the teaching of English. It's good, there's always something good to read. Um, uh, stemming from your uh, love of reading, uh, who's your favorite author and what's your favorite book in both reading and teaching? That's a tough question. <laughs> There's, I don't know if I can say I have a favorite. Um, as, I, as I've gotten older, my favorites change. My favorite right now, and in fact, I, I suppose it's because I teach it, is uh, Shakespeare. Um, I teach Hamlet every year, and it's a play I, I never tire of. There's always something new for me to learn from it. So. Right now, I'm, I'm uh, enjoying Shakespeare. Did you ever consider becoming anything other than a professor? You said you weren't thinking of teaching. Oh, yes. Uh, when I was a, about in sixth grade, I was going to be either a rancher or a journalist. <laughs> uh, and in fact, I was originally a journalism major in college. Uh, but after I had my first assignment um, covering a uh, school club, uh, it, it began to not be quite as interesting as it had seemed to me when I was reading exciting news articles. So I gave up journalism. Uh, how long have you been here at SAU? I came to SAU in the fall of 1990. And what attracted you to SAU? Well, I wanted to move to Arkansas. I was living in Illinois. My husband and I were um, thinking about leaving Illinois. Um, we were tired of cold winters. My family's in Oklahoma. My parents were getting older, and I thought it'd be good to be closer to them. And um, about the same time, we were thinking about we wanted to buy some property. And uh, we saw a program about mules, and we decided, well, maybe we'd raise mules. And then when I came here and found out that it was the SA, SAU Mule Riders, <laughs> uh, I figured I'd found a home. Kind of like destiny. Yes. <laughs> so. Um, um, what, t tell us a little more about your background. You said you're from Oklahoma? Uh, um, yeah. I was born in Texas. I grew up in Oklahoma. I graduated from high school in Tulsa. And uh, when I was a senior in high school, my parents, um, my father took a new job in Chicago and moved to Illinois. And uh, they, they bribed me with all kinds of things that, that they never came through with to get <laughs> me to move with them. So I moved to Illinois then when I was 18. I stayed there for about 20 years. Did you like Chicago? Did you like the Illinois area? Chicago's a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. <laughs> uh, it's great. Uh, I love to visit big cities, but uh, small town life suits me just fine. Um, being here, you teach the same stories every semester to different students, of course, like the Iliad and the Odyssey, but does it, does it ever get boring? Not really. The thing that makes great literature great is because there's so much there. There's um, there's complexity, there's, there's so much about what it means to be human. I never get bored with the literature. Um, maybe I get bored with my teaching sometimes, <laughs> but the literature always is, is great. So no, I don't get tired of it. Does it also involve the feedback you get from the students? Does that keep it well, interesting? It, it sure is exciting to see students who, who think, I, I mean, you know, they have to take a required course and a lot of students don't want to have to take it. It's pretty rewarding to have them come to me and say uh, that they're really glad they read the literature and that it really said something to them. So yes, that kind of keeps you going to, 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 to turn that light on. Um, I understand you wrote an article. Tell us a little bit about it, what you wrote it for, the topics. Well, I wrote an article that's included in a collection. Um, and uh, some friends of mine 
um, ask me to, to, to write something, what we were doing is looking at composition theory. About 20, 30 years ago, there was a change in the teaching of composition and how it's taught. Uh, and there were lots of uh, speculations about how teaching composition in this way would improve students' learning, would make students better writers, would relieve teachers from some of the burden of grading all those papers. And so what, what all of us were doing in that whole collection were looking at how, how this new way of teaching composition has, um, what's happened with it in 30 years. Um, we all decided that there are some things that haven't worked the way they were supposed to work. So really what we did in this book was take a look at different aspects of that, of teaching composition, and just look at how well it's worked. Uh, what I worked with was uh, looking at peer review. One of the new thoughts about teaching composition that came up, as I said, about 20 or 30 years ago was instead of talking about writing, to have students writing and have them responding to one another's writing, to have, um, to, to have the realization that writing's meant to be read and to understand if you're communicating with people, you have to have someone read it. Uh, well, teachers can't read three or four drafts from every student. So the idea was that we would have the students respond to one another's writing. What I was looking at was the claim that such activity would reduce the teacher's load. And what I found that it is that it has actually increased the load for teachers. Um, I, I did a survey and I, I got responses from professors at about 30 or 32 universities uh, in the United States and Australia. And um, what they said was they, they find it beneficial to have students respond to one another's writing, but they really see it more as a way to teach students how to be critical readers rather than better writers. So it's, it's really added kind of a, an extra level of work to, uh, to talk about what it means to be a good critical reader. Um, I was surprised that uh, so many teachers were so willing to add yet another task to their, to their workload, but uh, they all saw it as beneficial, but certainly not what it was supposed to do. Do you incorporate peer review in your classes? I do, but the reason I wrote this article was my own impression that, um, that it wasn't working the way I wanted it to work. Some students do a great job. Uh, they take it seriously, they look carefully at, at someone else's writing and they respond in a, in a very thoughtful way. Other students have a real hard time just really critically reading someone's work and saying, this doesn't work, this does work, I don't know what you're saying here. They tend to be, uh, they tend to want to help each other more than, you know, this is good, I like it, I understand everything you're saying. And in that sense, it, I don't see it as being successful, but I still do it because I, I too think there's some value in it. Um, how important do you feel writing is in the career field? I think it's of uh, uh, utmost importance. I, I used to teach a technical writing course here, and in the reading I did to prepare for teaching that course, I learned that um, for a lot of people in, in business professions, the higher they are in a, their profession, the more likely they are to write. So uh, I've always tried to convince students that if they can write well at the beginning, they're, they're more likely to, to, to rise more quickly in their professions. The ability to communicate clearly and effectively is an essential skill. Uh, and I think that's true now, and I think it's going to always be true. Do you prefer teaching composition or lit, or and why? I like them both. Uh, I, I had more experience really as a composition teacher. When I came here and learned I was going to have to teach Literature One. I was a little uh, worried at, at how, how good I'd be at it. Uh, but again, the literature is so great. I love the literature. I love to read it. I love to talk about it. Uh, I love to, to try to encourage students to, to give it a chance. Uh, I also like composition. Um, I really like them for very different reasons. Uh, of course, in composition, the reading's much different. Um, but again, for, in both k kinds of teaching, seeing the light go on in a student's eyes, is, it doesn't change it, regardless of what you're teaching. So I like them both.
Uh, compare the compare the two readings in composition and literature. Well, I was meaning really in composition. I do more of reading student papers than uh, huh. in, in literature. Of course, I'm reading, uh, uh, you know, all those great pieces of, of, of classical literature. Uh, so that's a bit of a difference. Um, but they're both important. Do you incorporate writing in your literature class? I do. And why is it just to remind the students of composition or just to get their feedback from the stories they read? Well, I, um, I always, I think it's hard to, for, for anyone to know what he or she is really thinking until you give words to thought. Uh, so if you're reading literature, until you begin to write about it, I'm not sure you really understand what you've read. Uh, so I think everyone needs to, to put, put their ideas into language in order to understand even their own ideas. So I use writing in everything I teach. Um, talk to us a little bit about the, about the, emergent, uh, excuse me, the Emerging Writers Club. Well, let's see. That's been around now. I think it's been eight years since uh, I first started that uh, uh, organization. Uh, I thought it was important when I came here and realized there was no creative writing outlet for students, no no publication uh, showing student efforts in in the creative writing area, and though I'm not a creative writer myself. I thought it was important for students to have an outlet to express themselves. And uh, so I started a, a club that uh, over the years became the Emerging Writers Club. And out of that we have a student publication called Emergence uh, and a writing contest to allow students to, to, uh, re to show their work. Uh, you know, there are lots of things students can do to get recognition. If they're musicians, they get to play in front of an audience. If they're on an athletic team, they get cheered on. But people who write quietly by themselves in their own rooms don't get much recognition. And people write to be read. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really thought it was important that students have an outlet for that kind of creative work. In your literature classes, as you mentioned before, it is a requirement and a lot of students feel it's not important for what they're planning on doing in the future. But why is literature still important today? I think literature tells us a lot about what it means to be human. There are so many experiences that we can never have. Our lifetime is so short, you know. Humans really don't have much time, and we can't experience everything there is to experience. We can hardly learn much about ourselves. I think the literature tells us a lot about ourselves uh, and tells us a lot about the human experience. Those, those, it, 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 it's fulfilling to learn things that, and experience things that you can never do for yourself. Um, so I really think it, it shows us the struggle of, of humans over the years. You know, you go back 3,000 years and find out we aren't much different. Um, the things that are important to us are really very similar. Uh, and I think that's news for, for most people. I think it's important to know where you're going. You have to know where you've been. And I think that's what the literature tells us. Um, and I know in, in many literature classes they, they read plays like Shakespeare mm -hmm. and um, I was just wondering if, if I know a lot of people in the English department support the, the theater department. I was wondering if, if you support them, if you go out to see the plays. Oh yes. Uh, I try to get to every play. I know I haven't, I haven't got always, but I'm very supportive of, uh, that's another uh, creative endeavor that uh, again, you know, we don't have any trouble getting people to go to a football game or a basketball game. Um, uh, the Theater is just as important, and certainly, like literature, gives us insight into something about the human condition. I encourage my students to go. Uh, a lot of them have never seen a live production, uh, and here they can go to a live production for, for a dollar. Uh, that's entertainment and enlightenment that you just can't get at any cheaper price. So I'm very supportive of the efforts of, the, of, of our actors and actresses. The lit classes require us to read a lot of the old classics like the Odyssey and the Iliad, as I mentioned, but would you like to see any new stories added that you would consider like modern classics? Well, it's modern classics is almost an oxymoron. How do you know it's classic until it's been around for a while? Um, I think there's a lot of great literature. I think there's a lot of great modern uh, literature. I used to be, uh, my interest when I was younger was primarily in contemporary American literature. But as I've had an opportunity to teach 
all the great works in, in Lit One, my ideas changed a little bit. And I think there's a lot of great American literature, but it has to, you know, it has to get through the test of time. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of things that seem important today that in three years, four years, five years, nobody remembers. Uh, but yeah, I do. Uh, whether or not we need to include them in the curriculum, you know, that's a debate that goes on. Um, there certainly is a place for, for the discussion of modern literature, and we do have classes for that. Uh, but in, the, uh, in terms of the Lit 1, Lit 2, I'm pretty satisfied with, there's great stuff there. Um, and you can always, there's always things you can read on your own. If, you, if I can encourage students to read, they can read the, the contemporary things on their own. Are there any specific things that you would like to see added to any specific stories that you, that you personally would like to have read? Well, I, you know, there's so much I can't even cover all that, that, that's, that our textbook offers in, in, in the Lit 1 class. Um, I wish I had more time to, to read more so I could encourage students to read other things that I haven't read. I'd like to see us, and we've tried this some, to include more multicultural readings. Uh, I'd like to see us do more of that, but first I have to educate myself about a lot of that because it's a, a kind of empty spot in my education. Uh, I've done some reading of uh, different works of literature from around the world, but not nearly what I've read in West, Western literature. So it's going to require re-education for me. When it comes to writing, I know a lot of students procrastinate, myself included, but what do you think is an effective writing process? Start early. Time. <laughs> uh, the, I think the best thing any writer can do, and it's something I've learned as a writer, I spend more time on my writing now, even though I think I'm a better writer than I used to be. The, the lesson I've learned is if you start early, you have more time to revise. The real secret to good writing, as far as I'm concerned, is, is revision. Uh, and most of us don't spend enough time, you know, we're so busy just getting uh, ideas on paper that we don't give ourselves a lot of time to think about what we've said and to think about ways to say it better. So uh, I'm more disciplined now than I was in my younger days, and so I, I can get myself to start early. It's hard to learn to do that. But it's the secret to success in good writing. Is it easy to tell when a student has put it off for so long? Oh, you bet. <laughs> uh, there's a clear difference between a polished piece of writing and something that, that was written at the last minute. And it may contain the germ of a, of a really good idea. But without time, uh, you can't even, you, it's hard to find the, the important thing to say. Uh, so yes, it's, you know, I've been reading student writing for 20 years. It's quite clear to me. Uh, on the same, on the other hand, um, sometimes students think and think and think about what they're going to write and then when they do sit down to write, they think they've written at the last minute, but really they've been thinking about it for so long that they've done a lot of writing in their head. Uh, and that, you know, you can do revision in your head too. It's the time you spend thinking as much as the time you spend writing that's important. Do you think proficiency tests like the CAP test can really accurately measure writing skills? I suppose they do as good as they can do under the circumstances. You know, we're, like it or not, this whole assessment is a, a part of our culture now and, and we're stuck with it. Uh, I suppose the CAP does uh, perhaps as good as any of them. But it's hard to do a 20-minute writing and, and, and say that reflects the ability of, that someone might, or, or the product someone might be able to produce over a longer, thoughtful period. But in a testing situation, you know, you don't have much time. Now, at least the CAP does have a writing sample. For a long time, most of those tests didn't. So we're getting better at it, but uh, I don't know that we can ever duplicate you know, the actual process of writing in a testing situation. What effects do you think the internet has on classes like literature and composition? I don't know that it's had as big of a, an effect as people might think. I think it makes information more available. Um, and there's a lot of bad information there. I think, I think the internet's gotten better in the last few years. 
uh, students tend to think that if it's on the internet it must be good and that's not true. Anybody can post anything. Uh, but in terms of actual effect on classroom uh, learnings, learning and teachings, teaching, and you use your tools to do it better and to do it faster maybe, but uh, I don't know that it's made that big of a difference, even though I do make use of technology in my own classes. Speaking of that, I know you use Dellas. Could you explain what that is? Well, it's a software program that was developed um, specifically for, for English classes. Uh, it was developed by English professors to be used in English classes, uh, primarily for composition, but it also lends itself to any kind of discussion. I like it a lot. I use it a lot. Uh, and I think it allows students to think about what they've read rather than just, when you have to write something down, it forces you to think a little bit. So I like the, uh, the, the online discussions. Uh, and I think it, it allows for a fuller discussion and more thought. Do you think that the incoming high school students today are, are prepared enough for college and for college like English assignments and stuff like that, papers? Oh, some of them are and some of them aren't. Um, I, I, think, I think teaching high school must be one of the most difficult things that a teacher can do with all the problems, all the outside in, uh, interferences. I think it's hard for teachers to prepare students as well as they could be prepared. Um, and I wish, I wish we had higher expectations of high school students. Um, but, you know, you learn what you want to learn. I think a good student, a good learner, learns under any situation. So I have to say, some of the blame might go back to the learners. I can't just blame schools and teachers. We have to blame ourselves for things we didn't learn that we should have learned. I know that when I was in high school, we focused more on grammar when it came to writing. How much emphasis do you place on that, or is it more content? I can't separate them. Uh, I think the, they, they go together. Uh, it's hard to say, well, you, you had something to say, but you didn't say it very well or in a very clear fashion. I can't separate them. Uh, on the other hand, I can't say grammar is the most important thing about writing. It's one aspect of writing. Uh, writing is a complicated process. And I see everything about it is really related. I have a hard time separating them, so I can't really grade for one way or the other. Mm -hmm. They go together. Um, so I grade for both. Uh, Dr. Belcher, what, what, what do you see is the biggest problem in, in students' writing today? Hmm. And, and how, would you, how would you help them? I think the hardest thing, maybe the biggest problem and the hardest thing to teach and the hardest thing to deal with is the complexity of the thinking and writing process. It's really a complicated process to come up with an idea, to understand what that idea is, and then to express it clearly to somebody else. It's a complicated process. It's hard to break it down into parts. It's something that takes time to develop. Uh, so I guess the biggest problem I see in student writing is that lack of understanding of the complexity of the whole process. What is the Writing Center? I know it's new at SAU, and how does it help the students? The Writing Center is great. I've, I've been wishing for a Writing Center for a long time. Uh, again, uh, when I was talking about this idea of, of the change in how composition was taught, from teaching it as a product, you know, talking about it and then students produce it, to helping them go through the process of writing, a Writing Center is there to be one of those good readers. Writing consultants are trained to be good critical readers. And so instead of going to, you know, a student going to his or her roommate and saying, look this over and tell me what you think, uh, students can go to, to uh, writing consultants who, who have some training in reading and responding to writing. To be a good reader and to give uh, a, a writer good information, good feedback to help with the revision is important. The Writing Center is for everybody. I mean, it's, it, you know, uh, it's for good writers, weak writers. Everybody can benefit from having somebody read and respond to their writing. Well, Dr. Belcher, thank you for being with us today. And for this edition of the SAU Report, I'm Daniel Green. And I'm Nikita Martin. The SAU Report is a production of broadcast journalism students. 
in the Department of Theater and Mass Communication at Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia.